So now, let me introduce the highlight. Chef Dan Bears. You see, Chef Dan, he's a chef instructor at Gouste Escoffier School of Culinary Arts uh, who aids in the online students. He's helping them navigate their culinary education. But before working in his current role, he began his culinary career by achieving his associate's degree in culinary arts and has 10 years of experience, including breakfast and butchery, uh, spanning a restaurant, hotel, and cruise ship industry. Basically, when you put all of that, you sum it up, Chef Dan got it going on, basically. So without further ado, if you can, or can you please put your hands together, stomp your feet, give a virtual loud scream, a round of applause for your very own Chef Dan Bears. Hello, all. Uh, thank you for making time uh, today to show up on Saturday. Um, so I'm going to show you a couple of techniques. We're going to dive into ravioli, uh, which, which is simple enough. It's something that we often buy from a can, and we can buy fresh and ready to go. Um, but today I'm going to show you um, kind of how to fold it and a different technique on how to uh, mold it together, how to boil it, and then we're going to make a, a beautiful presentation of that. The first thing I want to talk about is the filling. Um, so we can see on the cutting board here, uh, with, the, uh, with the filling, I had to make it ahead of time because we want it to chill. Um, as we're doing this, uh, we make it, this is going to be our creme fraiche, uh, which when you look at the recipe that came with this link, the creme fraiche here, um, is, it's a very uh, a wet and soft cheese. So we need to make sure we wrap it in cheesecloth and push most of the water out. From there, we're going to add our grated Parmesan. Note the difference here. So this on the cutting board, this is shaved uh, Parmesan. Grated is gonna be that, that powder that you find in that, um, in that, that green craft jar. Right, um, so I recommend getting some fresh grated Parmesan. So we have our creme fraiche with the liquid squeezed out. Then we have our grated Parmesan. From there, we have uh, spinach and then we have garlic. So I finally minced some garlic, got a little bit of golden brown on it, added it in. And then the spinach, very important here, we take it into boiling water. We only put it in for about 30 seconds until it turns bright green and then we run it under cold water. It's called blanching. So basically I cook it, I get it to the pigment, the color, uh, the, the part cooked, the slightly cooked that we want it to be. Um, and then from there, uh, I run it under cold water that stops the cooking process. After that, make sure I get all the liquid out of it, squeeze some of the liquid out, give it a rough chop and mix it together and keep it in the fridge overnight. So this allows us to have a firm, um, a firm filling so it doesn't run all over the place. Next, and um, this is the part that we're gonna focus on today. Um, so this is a pasta that I made this morning. Um, very simple, it's something that we, uh, we actually teach at uh, Escoffier. Uh, we teach you how to make a pasta from scratch. I use a rolling pin, no pasta machine, and I created this beautiful sheet so that we can start making our pasta. Simple recipe with all-purpose flour, uh, two eggs, a little bit of olive oil, and a little bit of salt. Um, and then I roll it out. I let it rest for half an hour and at room temperature, and then you can roll it out into this thin and beautiful sheet here. So there's a couple ways to do ravioli. The one that's in the recipe that was provided um, talks about using two sheets like this, and you're gonna put your filling portion in sections here. Then you would lay your second sheet on top. You would mold around your filling and then cut it into squares. We're going to do a little bit uh, of a different technique here uh, using just the one sheet, uh, which is a little bit easier if you don't have enough pasta for multiple sheets. Um, and uh, it creates a, a different shape, a half moon shape, which I think is very beautiful and attractive on the plate. So I have my pasta sheet here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the filling using two spoons, okay? Let me go ahead and make sure that we can see that. I'm going to portion out in something, <clears throat> in something called a Cornell. So Cornell is usually, a, it's typically an appearance piece, right? You want it to look pretty. Um, so you're going to put it on a plate where you can visually see it, but I'm going to take two spoons and work against each other and basically create a three-sided football. The reason that I'm doing this, even though we're not going to see it, is it gives me a nice even portion to dollop right in the center here, okay? So with this, I'm gonna go ahead and set my portion right here and then kind of mound it together. Beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna do that three more times. And then instead of placing another sheet on top, I'm going to go ahead and fold this over and then show you how to cut it into that little half moon. Beautiful. 
So it looks like my filling is getting a little bit close to room temperature. So what I do recommend doing is keeping it in the fridge until the last minute here. Got my Cornell, perfect. And then we'll do one more here. All right, so I have everything pretty close to the same size, which is what I'm looking for right here. I'm gonna move this one up a little bit. I have my pasta sheet all laid out. It's okay if I have a little bit falling off the side, we're gonna cut it so it's nice and pretty. Next step is I'm going to fold this over. So instead of placing that sheet on top, I can fold this over and then we're gonna cut it into those half moon styles. Before I do that, what I need to do is come in and mold around the filling and kind of create a beautiful little seal so that cheese isn't running everywhere. All right. Okay, so you can see that I packed it down. I haven't ripped or torn the pasta, but I wanted to pack it down. You can kind of see the shape starting to begin here. This is exactly what we're going for. Give me one second, I'm gonna turn the water up so we can boil this. Awesome. So right here we can see our half moon shapes, right? You can see that I'm barely putting any pressure. I'm just using the pinky um, right here and creating that, that round, that roundness that I want and kind of pulling back just a little bit to pull that cheese in, that uh, creme fraiche and Parmesan spinach garlic mixture, okay? So you can kind of see the indents here, good. Next, I'm going to take, I have a circle cutter. If you don't have one of these, that's okay. You can use a measuring cup. You can use a one cup measuring cup. You can use a glass. I recommend using plastic instead of um, a, a glass glass, uh, like a drinking glass, uh, just so you don't want it to break, right? You don't want any glass in the food. That's a big no-no. So now that I have it molded, okay? And you can see I have it a little bit pleated here. I kind of have my portions laid out. I'm going to take this, come up about halfway. So this line in here, and I'll show you on this is about halfway in the ring. And I'm just gonna go ahead and push down. So I have this, right? This is that half moon shape that I'm looking for. The pasta is already sticking together because it's a fresh made pasta. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay these out here and cut the rest of these out. Beautiful. All right, so I am, as I'm doing this, I'm giving a little bit of room. As you look at this, you can see where the cheese stops right in here with the indent, and then I have a little bit of room around the edges, and I'll show you what we're going to do with that in just a second. Let's go ahead and get the last one. Awesome. And so this one was a little bit off to the side, right? So you can see that I got some of the spinach here. So I'm going to pinch this edge, push some of the cheese out, and push it back over to this side. Beautiful. So now I have my, my edge back. That was just me portioning a little bit incorrectly so that when I came down here, I ended up getting a little bit of the cheese, but I pushed it back towards the center and we're going to pleat it so that it will create this beautiful ravioli. All right, this, uh, this extra pasta we don't wanna to toss. What we can do with this is we can roll it back up. We can mat it, we can lay it flat and then roll it out again so that I can get some more pasta out of it. I wanna create six total there. So I'm going to go ahead and do two more real quick, same method that we were looking at here. Got my little dollop. And my next little dollop. Awesome, same thing. I'm gonna roll all the way to the top and I'm gonna tuck, come in with my pinkies here. I'm gonna wrap just around it, okay? And put slight pressure so I know where to cut. Roll that one out just a little bit more. Awesome. Same thing. Come in, going halfway, <clears throat> halfway into the ring, put some pressure on it and cut that out. All right. And then same thing with these scraps. I can roll them back into um, uh, more flat dough so that I can make the more ravioli. I'm gonna check on the water real quick and then we're going to pleat these. Awesome. So we have a rolling boil here, uh, which is good. So these, uh, these are gonna take about two minutes. 
uh, to cook with pressed pasta. It cooks much faster than dried pasta because we're not rehydrating it. So I have my half moons. I'm afraid that the cheese is gonna come out. As you can see here, it, it's holding, but it's not holding super well. So I'm going to take a fork and I'm going to come in and put pressure around the outside. Make sure you can see that. And then I'm going to pull away. I'm not going to lift up because that will undo the seal that I've created. So I'm gonna come in and just put a little bit of pressure around the outside in that open space and pull away. It's okay if a little bit of filling comes out. Like I said, we're creating that seal right now. Okay, so now you can see that I have the stuffed ravioli. Okay, it's holding together. Everything has been pleated, so the cheese isn't going to run out. So that's what we're looking for with this little half moon shape right here. I'm gonna go ahead and do that with the rest of these. Beautiful, that's a really good looking one. So you can see that we have it pleated on here. On the back, you'll notice it's nice and flat, but again, this pleat up top is going to hold it all together. Beautiful. All right. So again, you're going to make your filling. You're gonna put it in the fridge. You wanna make sure that it's nice and firm. That'll help prevent it from running out here like we're seeing a little bit as it's sat at room temperature. Then you're going to make your pasta, whether that's with a pasta machine or you can purchase fresh pasta um, sheets at the store. Then you're going to add your filling into that pasta sheet. And from there, you're going to fold it over, create your little half moons and cut it out. Okay, so again, some of that filling came out, that's okay. What we're trying to do right now is make sure that the majority of the filling stays in. So I have this fresh pasta, I have a pot of boiling water. I'm going to go ahead and drop these in for the pasta to cook and I'll bring the pot over to the cutting board so you can see it. All right. So initially here on the cutting board, you can see that the pasta sinks to the bottom, okay? It's going to sink to the bottom in the beginning and next we're going to let it cook until we get to the moment uh, where it starts to flow. Once it starts to flow, that's when, um, that's when we know that the fresh pasta is ready. And then over here in this next pot, I have a simple alfredo that you can see on the cutting board. So I took a little bit of butter and flour, cooked it together to create a roux. Then I added some heavy cream and a little bit of Parmesan, black pepper, red chili flakes, okay? This is a nice creamy sauce. That Parmesan is going to complement the Parmesan that's already inside the ravioli. So I'm gonna let this simmer just a little bit. Again, you have to go very low and slow with your cream. You do not wanna scald it. As soon as you burn uh, milk or cream, uh, it stays with it throughout the whole thing. All right, that pasta is almost starting to flow. Next thing we can do is we can start looking at our plating. Uh, one, of, one of the most important things about food is our plating. Why is that important? Because we eat with our eyes first. So if it doesn't look appealing, we're not going to enjoy eating it, right? So I have this beautiful plate. I have six, um, six pieces of ravioli. That being said, odds are very appealing to the eye. And what I mean by that are numbers in one, three, and five. Uh, one steak, three pieces of potato, five pieces of green beans. It's very appealing to our eye. And that's something that we have to think about when we are plating. So what I'm going to do is get this plate ready for when the pasta is ready. And what I intend to do is break it into three. So I have six pieces. So I'm going to do sections of two um, around the plate in a triangle. To do that, what I want to do is I want to lay down just a little bit of sauce in three spots so that, that ravioli is not sliding around. It's going to come out a little bit wet. Okay. All right, so now I'm going to take the sauce. I'm just going to do just a dollop just to help hold the pasta there. So you can see that I've kind of created a crude triangle. It's okay if it isn't pretty right now because, again, that pasta, that ravioli is going to go on top of it. All right. 
bringing this back over. So you can see that the ravioli is floating to the top. I'm gonna let it go just a little bit longer. Make sure that pasta is cooked all the way through, but we are almost there. And as always, every good chef will say, work clean. Make sure your station is clean. I don't want to cross contaminate or put any food that I don't want on the plate um, or on my dish, in my dish. So make sure you're always cleaning as you go. All right. Now for the pasta, I have this. This is called a spider. It can be used in a fryer, um, but we are going to go ahead and use it. Um, you could use this or a slot of spoon, but I want to leave the water in the pot. Uh, at this moment. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out the pasta and put it on a paper towel uh, line plate to let some of that water run off. All right, turn my water off. So I have this pasta all laid out. You can see it's holding together. Um, this one looks like it came a little bit undone, so I would need to be a little bit more careful with my pleating and make sure it's a little bit more firm in the future. But overall, I have this pasta ready to go. So I'm going to let that extra water run off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the least attractive ones and put them on the bottom. Even if everything is perfect, there are going to be some that just aren't quite as pretty. Okay, so again, making sure I have all the water off. Good. Good. And then what I'm doing is I'm matching the ring with the outside of the plate. It's very appealing to have that edge that kind of creates a circle here. Okay, so you can see that I've created a triangle right here, right in the center. Good, that's gonna help hold some of the extra sauce in. I tend to use a bowl with pasta. I want that sauce to come to the center. There's nothing worse than chasing a, a piece of pasta or an olive around the plate, right? So I'm gonna put it in a bowl, so all that sauce. <laughs> excuse me, pulls to the center. All right, and the next steps, I'm gonna create some height here. See if I can get that pasta to hold. I'm gonna create an X a little bit on this. Let's go ahead and make all of these face the same direction. Good. All right. Good. All right, so come back to the sauce. Let's take a moment and look at this plate. I have a little bit of height with my pasta. I still have some white space to fill in and make pretty. I have triangles, I have X's, right? So it's not all pulled in the center. It's not random, but I have this kind of uh, this setup where these ridges are all facing the same way, right? Going counterclockwise here. I have the ring around the outside. It just looks a little bit more professional. It looks appealing this way, okay? So I'm gonna heat, give this one last blast of heat. All right. And now I have this Alfredo. So what I do want to do, so we have that little bit of sauce on the bottom, is I'm going to start by just drizzling just a little bit over the top of each of the pasta. I don't wanna cover the ravioli. I worked very hard to make this pretty um, and I don't wanna just smother it in sauce so it becomes a soup, right? So now I have this beautiful white sauce and this drizzle. Now, there's nothing more frustrating with sauce than not having enough for your pasta. We have a beautiful creamy cheesy filling, but this sauce is going to help with uh, the rest of the pasta. So what I'm going to do, that triangle that I made earlier, I'm gonna come in and drop some sauce into the center so that it pools, so that everyone has enough sauce with each bite. Make sure that, that seals, so beautiful. At this point, we have a white plate, a white sauce, and an off, uh, a little bit of a yellow, almost an off-white uh, ravioli. We want to throw some color in there. Uh, that's a lot, of, uh, a lot of the same color. So although this isn't a big difference in color, I'm going to add a little bit of Parmesan on top to fill those open spaces, because that will complement the flavor. A lot of Parmesan, a lot of cheese in this dish. Okay, so I've sprinkled that around. And then lastly, I want to finish by popping it with a little bit of green. Okay, so I have some, this is Italian flat leaf parsley. It has a little bit of citrus. It's going to, uh, that flavor is going to help cut the inside of the dish. And then last thing I would do here at the table side, I would let them decide if they would like to add some red chili flakes on top to add a little bit of spice. 
but that is going to be our beautiful finished ravioli uh, made fresh, made from scratch plate. All right. Do we have any questions on this plate? No questions? Awesome. That's a good thing. That means I taught it really well. Uh, hey, Chef Dan. Uh, yes, sir. Shika, Shika asked, any ways to fix the pleats? Say that again? Any way I can fix the pleat? Yes. So after, yes. after it's cooked, I can't, right? Once it's cooked, it becomes spongy pasta. So I'm not going to be able to redo the ridges or anything like that. What I would recommend is being a little bit more thorough in the beginning, unlike I was, right? I kind of did it quickly to, to be able to show and for sake of time, but make sure that your pleats are solid. When you push down with your fork, let me show you on the cutting board right here. So you have some pasta. When you push down with your fork, make sure that you're pushing firmly so that your fork goes all the way through. And then again, you wanna pull away and this pasta is dried out. So it ended up ripping at this point. But you want to make sure you pull away so you have a nice solid pleat on there. Um, that is something you have to make sure that you do in the beginning. And there are multiple ways to cut pasta. There are tools for cutting pasta. There are uh, little rolly wheels that make a nice, beautiful wave. So there's multiple ways to pleat it. This is something you can do without having to buy um, anything. Like I said, I used a rolling pin for the pasta. I used a fork. And then if you don't have one of these, um, you can use a cup. Um, so you can do all of this at home. Great question. Awesome. I have a couple more questions for you, Dan, uh, Chef Dan. A couple of people asked, um, how long does it take to cook the pasta? So uh, we just did that together. Uh, the pasta takes about two minutes to three minutes to cook. Once you see it start floating in the water, fresh pasta. Fresh pasta takes about two to three minutes to cook, depending on the thickness. So you're going to roll it out pretty thin. Um, as you can see here, I got it down to less than a quarter inch, maybe an eighth of an inch here. Um, so rolling it out to that thickness, two to three minutes should do it for you. Gotcha. I have another question in saying, um, do you freeze the mixture or refrigerate? If you refrigerate it, would freezing be a bad idea? Freezing is not the worst idea. Anytime I work with cheese, I try to keep it out of the freezer unless it's a really hard cheese and I won't use it for a couple of months. So for the filling, I put it in the fridge, making sure I have a tight seal on the plastic wrap so it doesn't get that dry film on top. Um, you could freeze it. I wouldn't recommend it. I would, uh, it would be um, a better quality product if you made it the day before and put it in the fridge overnight. Great question. Awesome. I, you know, somebody else just got me asking, uh, can you use pasta that's made a few days ago? And I just asked that while you were talking. Uh, about the pasta? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so pasta, um, I'm so sorry, would you repeat the question for me? Um, it, it was, it was uh, the actual, the question was, uh, can you use pasta that you made a few days ago? Yes, so pasta holds in the freezer really, really well. I almost always have fresh pasta in my freezer because you'll make it in a ball and let it rest at room temperature before you roll it out. So I will make a big batch of fresh pasta and then I will roll it into discs enough to serve two to four people. Um, I'm trying to think of a size. So about, about the size of, of this ring, um, I will make that, wrap it in plastic if you date it. Anytime something goes in the fridge or freezer, you want to date it so you know uh, what to use first. Um, but then I will, uh, you can put it in the freezer for a couple months, honestly. Now, will it be the same fresh product? Will it have the same flavor? No. Anything that sits in the fridge or freezer for a long time uh, will start to deteriorate and start to dehydrate in the freezer. But uh, fresh pasta, uh, I would say go ahead and put it in the freezer for a week to two weeks. You can keep it in longer. And then when you pull it out, Put it in the fridge the night before and then let it sit at room temperature for half an hour to an hour so that you can work with it and it's malleable. Great uh, question. Awesome. Another pasta question. Uh, can, you, can, you, uh, can you roll out the pasta with the rolling pin? I am so sorry. I missed that again. Oh, uh, can you roll out uh, the pasta with the rolling pin? Yes. That is actually uh, what I did with this pasta this morning. So I started with my disc, roll it out into an oblong shape, and then you start in the center, push, push, Turn it a quarter, push, push, flip it, and do that over and over and over again until it gets nice and thin. And that's actually uh, something we learn within the first uh, six weeks uh, if you uh, decide to join this program. We talk about making pasta from scratch. 
Awesome. And I got one last question for you. Um, what's the names? What's the name of the leaves to decorate? I am uh, so what's, sorry. What's the, the name of the leaves to decorate? What uh, what kind of uh, leaves is that on there? The leaf, gotcha. These are uh, Italian parsley. So it's a flat leaf parsley, not a curly parsley. There's a little bit more citrus in it, a little bit more of an acidic taste to it. Um, very, very slight. It's not acidic like a lemon, um, but Italian flat leaf parsley is my go-to parsley over the curly. Uh, the curly is very fibrous and woody, uh, whereas flat leaf price, parsley is a little bit more bright. Um, it looks like cilantro, so make sure you know uh, what you're getting into with that. Um, yes, this is a Italian flat leaf parsley. Great question. Okay. Is there a substitute for the cream also? For the cream, yeah. You could definitely do this in a marinara or a red sauce. I tend to pair my sauce with what's inside. So if we're doing a cheese filling, um, like we have in this recipe, I tend to do a cream sauce on top. If we were to do a, a, a cooked uh, style meat filling, um, then I would do a marinara to pair with that. But you could put any sauce. You could do this in pesto. You could do this in a red sauce. You could do this in a cream sauce. Um, that is entirely up to you. But again, you do want to think about your flavor profile. Okay, sounds good. Um, and I actually, uh, uh, Shakia, I, yes, I see your question. You saying would there be other demonstrations in the near future? Yes, uh, we would definitely have that. We typically do it once or twice a month. Okay. Yes. Um, outside of that, anybody else have any more questions? I see one about the shape of the pasta. Did you get that one, Dwayne? Um, I, I don't think so. Okay. It says why the half moon and not square or a different shape? It looks like a pot sticker. What is the difference? The difference the is your, your preference and your appearance. How are you going to plate it? What is it going to look like? What do you prefer? Um, so I went with this because uh, I only made enough pasta for one sheet. So I didn't have a second sheet. Um, if you were to do the squares, you would want a second sheet to lay over the top and mold it. Um, but if you have less pasta, you can do one sheet and then fold it over in half. Um, like we showed here. So it is up to you on texture and preference. I like the way this looks, especially in the plate. Um, working on that half moon with a round plate um, comes out very appealing and very beautiful. Great question. Awesome. And the last one I have for you here, Chef Dan, um, what, what are the ingredients for the pasta again? Of the pasta or the filling? Yeah, uh, the pasta. Pasta is super simple. Um, so we, <clears throat> when you make an egg pasta, right, an egg noodle pasta, um, this is going to be, um, and I believe the recipe was, was shared with this uh, demo, right. but it will be all-purpose flour. And then you're going to use two eggs beaten and then olive oil and salt to taste. And then from there, what you do is you create a mound, you create a mountain with your flour, dig a little hole in it, and then you drop your eggs, flour, and salt right there and swirl, swirl, swirl until it all mixes together and creates that beautiful uh, dough consistency ball. Great question. Awesome. And our, our flavored pastas, is, are, is that okay? It is, flavored but pasta? it gets a little bit more tricky. So okay. what I recommend, start with this, make this once before you start dabbling in, in playing with pasta. Um, okay. What happens is the water content changes. Okay, so you might need more flour, less flour. So if you were to do a spinach pasta, you would have to cook your spinach blend it up, and then you have to add that to the, to the pasta. That's high in water. And so what's going to happen um, is your, your pasta is going to require a little bit more flour to get to that perfect consistency. Um, you could add some red chili flakes in. You could add roasted red pepper. You could add uh, squid ink uh, or octopus ink. Um, creates a beautiful black pasta. I do not recommend that. It gets everywhere. Uh, do not wear white uh, when you do that. But you can definitely add flavors to your pasta. I do recommend um, start with a basic technique, feel comfortable with that, right? Has anyone ever made a cake? When you make a cake or a cupcake, you do it once, it doesn't come out right, you do it again, it comes out better until you have it down. Same thing with pasta, start with the basics um, and then you can start experimenting after you've made it a few times. Awesome, awesome. Well, outside of that, Chef Dan, I definitely thank you so much for today. Um, it looks delicious. It looks delicious. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna try it. I don't know if mine's gonna come out like your chef, Dan, but I'm gonna try it. And I know if I keep practicing over and over and over, it's gonna probably turn out maybe not like Chef Dan's, but you know, maybe Chef Dwayne. How about that? we'll just change the front name? I love um, it, and and I think that's yeah. I I know that you can do this. I've I've seen your cooking. Uh, anybody can do this, like you said. It just takes practice and a little bit of guidance from somebody uh, with tips and tricks. So. 
I'm excited to see your finished plate. Awesome. Chef Dan, thank you so much as always. Um, I'm so glad for you. I'm so glad you're able to teach our students. And we're really thankful because the things that you create, the way that you teach is just wonderful. Um, ladies and gentlemen, can you please give Chef Dan another virtual round of applause and let's all thank him for his services today. Thank you so much again, Chef Dan. Have a good one all. Awesome. You have a great one. Also.